holidays are bullshit. <laughs> Take St. Patrick's Day, which once celebrated the use of shamrocks to prove to ignorant villagers that the Holy Trinity was in fact one entity and therefore they should give up their polytheistic gods, but now is just an excuse to drink until you puke green. Or Thanksgiving, which originally memorialized greedy ex-cons who paid back native hospitality with smallpox blankets and broken treaties but now means filling yourself with enough tryptophan that you forget how boring televised football is. <laughs> and don't get me started on Christmas. Scientists now believe Jesus Christ was likely born in the summer or early fall because there were shepherds in the field, which doesn't happen in that part of the world in December. But early Christians co-opted pagan rituals from Saturnalia and winter solstice, eventually stealing the entire idea of taking wool stockings from statues of Roman gods and morphing that into hanging them on the fireplace with care in hopes that a fat man will crawl down your chimney in the middle of the night for cookies because divinity. <laughs> I'd like to tell you that I did the following as a grand sociological experiment or to prove some larger point, but the truth is much simpler. I did it to impress a girl. In 11th grade, I was taking a Russian literature class and we were reading Dostoevsky's existential classic, Notes from Underground, which starts with the best opening lines in all of literature. I am a sick man, I am a spiteful man, I am an ugly man, I believe my liver is diseased. And suddenly I looked over and Melissa was smiling at me and this was so odd and unexpected that I actually looked behind me to see if there was anyone back there, but there wasn't. It was the middle of winter, more cold and gray than white and snowy. Melissa and I started hanging out. We talked about putting notes from underground to music, perhaps making it into an opera. And it was only our total lack of any ability on any known musical instrument that prevented that from happening. <laughs> Melissa said that she yearned for a guy like Dostoevsky, dark moody, cynical, and I thought with moody, dark, cynical glee, that's me. <laughs> and then on February 1st, I got an idea. I would invent a holiday, claim a backstory, hundreds of years old from the darkest corners of Russia, and get everyone to celebrate the warped genius of Fyodor Dostoevsky. <laughs> this seemed very simple to me, and I thought my biggest challenge would be coming up with a catchy name. I first considered Vietzi Day, and I don't have to tell any of you that Vietzi is an Estonian word that means the vague feeling of laziness, not wanting to go anywhere or do anything. <laughs> But would people really rally around lazy? And then for a while I got hung up on the Japanese word wabi-sabi, which we all know is a philosophy of living that focuses on finding beauty within the imperfections of life and accepting gracefully the natural tendency of all things to fall into a cycle of growth, decay, and death. But then I chanced upon the Russian word Tosco, often mistranslated as sadness. Tosco means much, much 
more. It's one of those beautiful foreign words that has no direct English equivalent describing a deep-seated spiritual anguish, often without any specific cause, an ache of the soul from existential longing when there is nothing left to long for. <laughs> Tosco Day was the perfect way to celebrate the legacy of Dostoevsky. And in fact, if Tosco Day did not exist, it would have been necessary for someone to invent it. And just to be clear, it did not, so I did. <laughs> the first week I put up posters all over school and around town that just said, Tosco Day is coming. <laughs> Nothing else, no explanation. The second week, I enlisted the aid of a friend who could draw, and I added a logo showing a crowd soaked in despair from the languid melancholy of the setting sun, so basically a lot of grays and dark purples. The third week, I added the words cotton candy and fried dough, because who doesn't like cotton candy and fried dough? And the fourth week, I expanded the logo, adding Dostoevsky's profile and including a date and location, February 29th, on the lower football field around the corner from the high school. I also printed up a one-page fact sheet on Tosco Day, which I copied one morning when the teacher in charge of the mimeograph machine had gone out for a smoke. I knew that she always stubbed out her cigarettes halfway down because... She thought that was healthier, which gave me enough time to make the copies, but not enough time to sit around inhaling that sweet, sweet purple ink. Here are a few facts that I made up about Tosco Day. It originated simultaneously in 16 small Russian villages as a celebration of all that is good in life, tempered by the awareness that most of that good will never reach these same villages. <laughs> Each village elects a king of Tosco Day, whose duties include grunting like a pig for three straight hours. And of course, the children, the children are given sweets on Tosco Day, and then told that a loved one will die for every one that they eat. <laughs> Grown-ups, carefully monitor the kids, and whenever they see one of them eating a piece of candy, they say something along the lines of, there goes Aunt Katya. <laughs> Melissa started getting really excited about the idea of Tosco Day, so much so that it became more difficult to tell her that it was all just a joke. So I looked into renting cotton candy and fried dough machines, which were prohibitively expensive. <laughs> As Tosco Day neared, I became filled with dread, which ironically <laughs> might be the appropriate reaction to a fictional holiday based on spiritual anguish. Melissa was really looking forward to all of the festivities, retelling the story of Tosco Day, electing the king, and her mood was so infectious that I kept forgetting I had made all of this up. I know. The afternoon of Tosco Day, Melissa and I approached the lower football field. Wait, I said. There's something that I need to tell you, but... She grabbed my hand and pulled me forward around the corner and I closed my eyes because I didn't want to see the disappointment on her face. Disappointment made so much worse by my good intentions. And then I heard something weird. Melissa giggled. I opened my eyes and there were hundreds of people on the football field. A few had even made banners. There was no fried dough or cotton candy, but someone brought cupcakes and lemonade, and kids were running around making up games, trying to do whatever they thought they should do to celebrate this wonderful, magical, fictional holiday. 
and some of them were chanting, Tosco, Tosco, Tosco. The captain of the football team was elected king of Tosco Day, and he happily grunted like a pig for hours. <laughs> Melissa had a great time, despite the fact that the afternoon included little spiritual anguish or existential dread. A week later, she started dating the captain of the football team, <laughs> whom no one had ever described as moody, dark, or cynical, which substantially decreased her availability for reliving the angst of existential Russian writers and left me completely out in the cold. I know. <laughs> as for me, I never told anyone that I had made up this holiday or put up all the posters. The next year, people wondered if there was going to be another Tosco Day celebration, or maybe, since it had fallen on February 29th, it was something that would only come up on leap years every four years. <laughs> and with Melissa still dating the football star, although long distance now because he was in college, it hardly seemed worth my own spiritual anguish to recreate Tosco Day. If we'd had Facebook or Instagram back then, there would be event pages and photos and probably a website. But instead, Tosco Day faded into a fuzzy shared memory that grows fainter and fainter every year. And while it might never come around again, I am here tonight to tell you that for one cold afternoon in late February on the lower football field of a high school in western Massachusetts, Tosco Day, born of spiritual anguish, disconnected from any specific event, not to mention the desire to impress a pretty girl, was the best holiday ever. Thank you.